Bueno, it's Pablo Vázquez and it's we, just, we are in May. Let's see what's changed in Blender since last week. Sculpting, or more precisely, the multi-resolution pipeline is finally complete. So all the improvements that we've seen in the past for improving multi-resolution and apply base and all the good stuff now also includes the subdivision levels available while sculpting. What does it mean? It means you, you can now sculpt in any level. You can go to the lowest one and do like big strokes and then go into the higher one for those like, little tiny detail, go back and forth as much as you want. You can use subdivision type simple for like hard surface modeling and linear. And since you can subdivide, you can now also unsubdivide to remove subdivision levels from your mesh. And you, on top of that, you can also rebuild subdivisions. This tool is fantastic when you're working with models from another software, for example, that you imported and they're like super high resolution. Well, this one will rebuild all the levels as much as possible. And then you can go back and up in the, in the subdivision levels. It's like magic. So with subdivide, simple, linear, unsubdivide, rebuild subdivisions, reshape, apply base and undo support and I think we can now finally say that Multires is in uh, good shape. Performance. Who doesn't like a little bit of performance? And this one is not a little bit, it's actually quite some. It's between 30 and 40% improvements on playback. So when you play back your animation, it should be just faster now. It's a new library that Blender is using by Intel, it's called TBB, but it's not only attached to Intel processors. There are tests done with AMD Threadrippers, for example, where it goes so much faster. So you can see now here the numbers and the promising thing is that this library has uh, some parts that could be extended to be used for like the depth graph, which is pretty much everything in Blender. It's like the heart of Blender or the draw manager, which takes care of drawing things in the viewport, or even the compositor. User interface, long overdue change. The stats related to the, to the 3D data on your scene, like your polygons, your amount of objects, triangles and stuff, is no longer in the status bar. It has been moved to the viewport where it belongs. It's a new overlay setting, you have to turn it on on the overlay popover and it's gonna be in the top left with, together with the rest of the data related to like information about your viewport. Which is a nice thing because sometimes if you're using Blender for something not even related to 3D, like video editing for example, you will have that information down there using space when you don't really need it. Also, because being viewport dependent, it means that more features can be added or it can be more powerful, for example, it's in the viewport, so you can have one viewport with some objects and one viewport with local view or some collections on and then you could have uh, the statistics only for that one viewport. Whereas before being the status bar, you couldn't do that because that's global, that's for everything, you couldn't know exactly. Right, moving to the material properties, you can now find the row of uh, decorators is called, but it's the button that you can click to add a keyframe, now it's added to the material properties. Two defaults have changed in Blender for the better. One is in the viewport, the clip start. With that, when you can get very close to objects, when you go with the camera to super close, well, now that value was 0 0.10, which is like 10 centimeters, which was a bit, a bit big. Uh, and that has been changed actually for new viewports, but not for the existing workspaces in the past. So now it's there. That's gonna save a lot of time for everybody, I think. But if you have like, I don't know, maybe your scene is in a weird scale and you see some glitches or like some Z fighting and stuff, maybe that's a setting you need to tweak. And the second one, it's a proposal was in right click select and it was a very small change, but actually making life a lot easier for the track two constraint. Most of the time that you use the track two constraint, you use it for something like the camera, which by default has the access in a way that if you use this track two constraint in the past, the moment you add it, the camera will go like, <laughs> go look down. And that was uh, every time you have to set it up and uh, you have to click and see which one is the access you want and the app, which uh, access to be up and stuff. Now it's in a more sensitive way that you just add a track two constraint and it by default is gonna be looking properly how it should be. <laughs> Again, it's a tiny thing, but I think if you sum them all up, it's gonna add some minutes, hours, months of your life saving. While drawing in grease pencil objects, you can right click to change the active material or you can press 
you to access the list of all the materials I set one as active so it's a quick way to change active material while drawing super fast okay this one is more for developers or add-on developers if you uh, search now while having developers extras option enabled you can see now the name of the operator and the RNA path of it a little bit of everything first one node wrangler add-on there has been a fix that makes the control shift click the the viewer of that node work and inside of groups inside of groups it's been broken for so long it's finally fixed tracking in the lens settings you're gonna find a new distortion model that makes it easier to work with a uh, nuke or a uh, natron both of them is compatible so it's gonna ease your work if you use those apps together with blender and a good news for the Linux community is that the initial bourbon support for Wayland it's in place now in master and it's being worked on at the moment. And that is all for this week. Of course, there's been more actually, more bug fixes. The 2.83 branch is getting a super stable. It's getting a lot of fixes every day even. And <laughs> Sometimes it's funny to go through the commits and see some fixes, which is like makes you think what people were using Blender for. This one is a fix that makes simulations work well with animated gravity, which of course is it should work, of course, animated gravity, but it, it makes you think like sometimes I, I just look at these commits and it's like, what were they working on? Were they like, I don't know, simulating some liquids inside of a spaceship that had gravity like here on Earth and then it went to low, low orbit and then it like, I don't know, it's, uh, it, I don't know, it's just interesting to see. But hey, it's fixed. So yeah, go do spaceships and stuff. <laughs> All right, that was the recap for this week. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe, like, up, like, down, like, uh, side likes. I don't know. Want to bye bye. <laughs>